Williamson, and on behalf of myself and, and my wife Donna, we would like to welcome uh, each of you here this morning and also to the, um, those members looking online, uh, being streamed virtually and in the fellowship hall. Uh, welcome to Village Point this morning. Um, Donna and I are kind of new. We're, we're not new, but we're new here to you all. Um, and I want to thank uh, Pastor Stone for giving me this opportunity, but it came with a warning. He said, I don't want no sermon. I don't need one. I ain't got time to mess with one. But he's put me on a very short leash, but I still got to say this. I want to explain to you all this wonderful congregation how Donna and I came to be here because you are looking at Mr. Historical, Mr. Traditionalist, Mr. Sentimentality. I do everything because I've always done it. For me, that's the ultimate reason. You never make any changes because I've always done it. For, 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 for us to be here this morning is, is truly um, uh, totally out of character. So I want to explain just as briefly as I can how that came to be. Um, the pandemic, the pandemic, no one saw it coming. No one had any practice. No one had a game plan. Nobody had nothing. In, in March, it just was unleashed on the world, and there it was. By mid-April, by mid-April, the term COVID-19 had been said on all the various media outlets several billion times. Several billion times the word, the phrase COVID-19 had been spoken. There has never been, a, it, it, it is unprecedented, the, the marketing of fear that has accompanied this situation. Fear was marketed on a grand and glorious and wholesale level without precedent. Fear, fear, fear is an extremely powerful emotion. It is very powerful, one of the ultimate. But it is also, for all of its power, it is just that negative. It is a negative experience. When one is dealing in fear, you might make it through. You might pass that exam that you're scared to death of. But when you get to the other side, and even if you're successful, there's no feeling of joy. It's a feeling of relief. It is a feeling of relief. I made it. Wow. I made a 70 and that's passing. This whole phenomena affected many institutions, none of which was more crippling than the church. None of which. The church became the most dangerous place on earth to contract COVID-19. You can go to Walmart, you can get on an airplane, you can do anything, but heaven forbid you go to a church. Because if there's any place on earth that's got COVID in it, it is every sanctuary in America. That was the inferred message. It is still the inferred message. No, no church knew what to do because nobody had practiced for this. There wasn't no dry rehearsals. This was real dilemmas in real time. And everybody had different ideas. But I want to remind you all that Jesus said, Fear not. Fear not. He said, when when the storm came up and the disciples were scared to death in the boat and he walked out there on the water, Jesus said, what? Take courage. Take courage. 
It is I. Take courage. Jesus said, My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Winston Hill said, Fear is a reaction. Fear is a reaction. Courage is a decision. It is a decision. And Village Point Methodist Church and its leadership and all of you wonderful people demonstrated exactly everything I have just described starting just as quick as it was legally possible to do it, y'all started meeting in the backyard. No strings attached, wear a mask, bring a folding chair, we'd love to have you. Zoom and Facebook Live and YouTube and all that stuff, it has its place, but it is not the answer to one-on-one -on -one fellowship. Jesus didn't have Zoom or none of that stuff. You, it, it cannot, it is not a substitute. It is apples and oranges. Christianity depends on one-on-one -on -one fellowship. It is, it is paramount. It is inseparable. You cannot operate virtually as a church, as a body. And you, but I'm preaching to the choir because y'all knew that. And you demonstrated that. And you've continued to demonstrate it. And my hat is you have You have lived out Jesus' words. Take courage. It is a decision. We're sure it's uncertain. It, it times are scary. But we're going to make the decision to go forward in the best way that we can. And y'all have done that. God bless you. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, Donna and I are so humbled and honored and so glad to be here. Thank you very much. I hope I didn't run over too long there. Stone, but um, I appreciate all that you guys have done. Um, could we bow now and begin our, our opening prayer and then we will move along into the service. Um, dear gracious and heavenly Father, as we begin the Advent season, we sincerely thank you for the ability to gather and to worship in your name. Until this year, that freedom was perhaps taken for granted. We thank you for wisdom and courage and faith in this strangest of years. We ask for your guidance and direction this morning as we endeavor to more closely walk with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Um, it is Christmas time. It is Advent season. And um, my wife Donna and I are going to um, light the Advent candle. If I can find the thing I'm supposed to read. Um, yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Donna, would you come up please? And Okay. Mash that red button on my. Today is the first Sunday of Advent. Advent means coming. And this season, we prepare for the coming of Christ. We prepare this wreath and light these candles to remind us of the gifts Christ brings to the world. The wreath in the form of a circle reminds us that there is no beginning and no end to God's loving and caring. The light from the candles grows stronger each Sunday and reminds us that Jesus is the light of the world. Today we light the candle of hope. 
The people of Israel hoped in God's promises and were not disappointed. We too have the same experience of salvation and believe in God's promise to send Jesus to judge the world and establish his kingdom on earth. Hope is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look at the light of this candle, we celebrate the hope we have in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Thank, Thank you, God, God for, the for the hope you, you give us. Remain, Remain with us while we wait for all your promises to come true. Help, Help us to worship, to hear your word, and, and to, to do, do your, your will, will by sharing, sharing your hope with, with each, each other. other. Amen. may be seated. Um, announcements, the, the only thing I kind of know, and this could be wrong, uh, Pastor Stone, that there will be a Christmas Eve yes. service that is affirmative. That is affirmative. We're working on time and said if we need to do it twice, uh, Sarah and I will come over there. Okay, very good, sir. All right, any other announcements that we need to uh, make mention and discuss?
Okay, joys. Joys, um, um, birthdays, anyone ready to admit a birthday coming up? That's a brave one. That's, that's an example of courage too, isn't it? Having birthdays. <laughs> One of our guests had a birthday. All right. All right. Well, bless your heart. All right. Hit it. Not to be left out is anniversaries. Any anniversaries? Yeah. Oh, the same couple. <laughs> All right. Okay. One more time. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary. Okay, also in joys, part of our joys is Miss Helen in Paradise, California. She was told when she was 102 that she was gravely ill and would, that was pretty much it. And then her nursing home burned down on top of that. And now she's cured and is 104. <laughs> Don't tell me I'm done yet. Also, John's brother in Denver has completely recovered from COVID-19. So that is a, a joy indeed. Any other joys we would? Yes, ma'am. My brother and my sister are doing much better, but I still ask for prayers for Nick because he is in remission and he does feel that. Okay. Okay. Um, concerns? I'd yes. Like to, uh, congratulate whoever decorated the church sitting up here. It's absolutely beautiful. And the wreaths on the back door, I think they need a round of applause if you don't. Yes. This is a beautiful little building and it decorates so wonderfully for Christmas. It is just darling. So thank all that was involved in that, in that effort. It is such, such a classic setting. And, and we even rang the bells this morning. Did y'all hear that? The bells rang. I don't think I've ever been in a church that had bells and rung them. So that's something to remember. Um, also, let's see, our concerns, Miss Betty B, um, is we lift her up this morning, and also um, Jamie informed me that Stacy fell out of a tree stand yesterday. Was it yesterday, Jamie? Is in a very serious condition, uh, is presently paralyzed, but the, uh, the doctors think that, that it may not be permanent. So that is certainly, um, that's a concern that we want to, to lift this morning. Stacy in the tree stand. Um, other concerns that uh, we need to lift up this morning? Yes, ma'am. I have a concern for the children. Okay. That, that is so very true, and, and the assumption is that everyone's got a home schooled experience. That is an assumption. It is so far from true, it's not even close. Uh, but, but that is a, an excellent concern, and an entire uh, class system can be lost on the education front in, in this present environment. That is yet another casualty of this situation, but it is grave, and I, I agree. Thank you for bringing that up. 
Any others that would like to come before the Lord this morning? Okay. We also want to, to recognize the flowers on the piano this morning, the beautiful uh, cards um, are in, uh, in of Terry and John's son, Chuck. So uh, that is a beautiful reminder, and we appreciate uh, that effort. Okay. Well, let us go to the Lord in prayer now. Um, Dear gracious and heavenly Father, we acknowledge that you are the omnipotent, all-powerful, yet all-gracious and loving creator. We humbly confess that we have fallen so far from the mark, from every mark that you have ever established, we've missed all of them many times. Yet as we gather this morning in this special season, it is with hearts of thanksgiving that you are that gracious, loving, and forgiving Father. We have requests this morning. Some of these has been spoken, has been verbalized, and others have remained on our hearts. But we lift these up to you, Father, as the great physician, while also praying that your will will be done. Bless this church, continue to guide, direct, and sustain. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, our um, second hymn. Second hymn, and I think it is in your bulletin. Christmas. 
And I think this year as I have ridden around and looked at the beginnings of the decorations, I told Diane, I said, you know, I said, we need something to celebrate. We need some excitement. We need some joy. And we've got to do it as much at home as we've ever done it before. And so I expect us to have more yard art. I expect us to have more glitter, more lights, and all that goes with that uh, this Christmas year. Because I re realize that, that we need something to get excited about, and we need something to celebrate. And, you know, I hear it every year, well, we're too commercialized. Well, you know, we're this and we're that. We do the wrong things. But I realize uh, that some people will never get it. But I think that we do. This, to me, is the most wonderful time of the year. I can hear songs about Jesus all the time. I have a 102.7 on my FM radio on my car, and Diane has XM, so she's got Holly, and she has, she has a Hallmark and all of that. And when you have more than one, if, you don't, if somebody jazzercises one of them that I don't like, then... I wind up changing the channel, you know, so, but, but I love, and look, this time of year, you can even watch television with your children, you know, you ain't got to fast forward, you ain't got to say, ooh, I wish I hadn't heard that, wish I hadn't seen that, and you know what I'm saying, I mean, you can watch all the warm fuzzy and feel good stuff you want to, and you know what we're over with, it gives you a good attitude, it makes you feel good, honey, it's Christmas. Today is the first Sunday in Advent. It's a time that we enter into that season. We enter in, Advent means coming in a broad sense of the word. There's a lot more ink to be spilt around the Advent word, but that's essentially it. And, and the Christ child is coming. And, and I think about that. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of that. It's that time of year when people make a more sincere effort to do some of the things we all do all year, like being kind one to another, and, and like being generous and giving of ourselves and what we have, like we should do all the time. This is my favorite time of year. You know, and I like everything that happens. The specialty, the sacredness, the secular, and all the things that go, because every one of them in their own way for me point to the birth of the Christ child. I remember so well whenever we went to divinity school and I was struggling to get through three years of seminary and whenever those exams were coming up in December and I was trying to, trying to pass and trying to do all I had to do, I loved taking my family to the mall. We'd go to the mall and whenever we'd get to the mall, we would uh, just walk around. We didn't have any money. I didn't have a job. Uh, I did. I made $5,000 a year, y'all. I forgot. I apologize. Uh, I did. That was housing. That was insurance. That was retirement. That was travel. That was everything that's in the package, honey. That was it. And, and I appreciated my little church, and I worked my heart out doing it. But when those papers were due, and then a sermon was due on Sunday, I went to the mall. Why? Because I wanted to see the lights. I wanted to see the glitter. I wanted to see all that. And Diane... It couldn't get too tacky for her. Look at that house over there. And you'd ride by and you'd think, gosh, wonder who did that. Don't you love it? I'd say, yeah, honey, it's beautiful. And, 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 uh, but th that's just because we, we, we love the season and we love the beauty of the things that we would see out there. And I, I remember them so well because all of them remind us that he's coming. The birth of the Christ child, this baby Jesus, is coming. People miss the point of the season, yeah, but that doesn't mean I'm going to miss it. I remember as I sit there and I listen to the Christmas song by Nat King Cole, when he begins to sing about the chestnuts, I, I, I can sit back and I can think about the days when I had grandparents. I can remember my, my granddaddy because nobody had any money much and he was an engineer on the railroad, brought up in an orphanage, thank God for the Masons. Um, he, uh, he gave $100 per child and Santa Claus came. It was a beautiful thing. I got a Wilson baseball glove. I got a football and, and, and my sister got baby dolls. It was a beautiful thing to 
And I could sit there and see that old man around that warm morning stove that you go in there and it was hot as I don't know what in that kitchen, dining room area, but we loved it and we loved them. And I, I can sit there and I can listen, I can think about all those wonderful songs that, that were sung, like when Andy Williams was saying, It's the most wonder of the year. Can't y'all sing? You're dead. Look, <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. It, 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 it does something for me. It rekindles that which I hope I haven't lost. And when I hear my favorite song, Joy to the World, that you know we don't do that to Christmas Eve service. Start next Sunday, I don't want anything but Christmas, okay? Please. And, 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 and that'll be just wonderful that, 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 that I will be singing that with you, as Bobby said. This is a great place to be. These are one, y'all are wonderful people, and you help me to get into the season. Yeah, we light candles. Yeah, they, three of them did all this decorating. If you think you could please those two of them, I won't call any names. I would never say gay and jeans for anything in this world. Uh, but it, 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 I love it. It is. You're right. Thank you, Hunter. It's beautiful. And, 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 and I, and, and I want to see it. I want to see it. I want to be reminded of what's going on. I'm enthusiastic about this time of year. Uh, and today is not, uh, it isn't even December yet. But I'm ready. I'm ready and I'm thankful that Advent is here and it's going to continue through Friday, December the 25th and going beyond for me. Our Christmas celebration this year will be historic and authentic, but I, I, I think that it needs to be meaningful to all of us. You may not be in the spirit yet as I am, and each week we'll take steps and we'll move forward and we'll do a little bit more. Uh, about Christmas, and I'm going to get you to that to that uh, wrapped up child and laying in that manger. Today, I want to mention and talk to you uh, and read to you a text that comes from Isaiah toward the end of Isaiah 64th chapter. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversary so that the nations might tremble at your presence when you did awesome deeds that we did not expect you came down the mountains quaked at your presence from ages past no one has heard no ear has perceived no eye has seen any god besides you who works for those who wait for him you meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean. And all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf. And our iniquities, like the winds, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hid your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Uh, now consider we are all your people. Your holy cities have become, and on he finishes up. May God bless the reading and hearing of that text from Isaiah. And, and I'm reminded of that text. It comes up in the lectionary every year. This passage shows us attitudes I think that we need to adopt during the Christmas tide, and keep year-round. One is that and, and it's hard, it's so hard for independent people, you know those bootstraps, didn't give me anything except for a hard time, I work for what I have. But somewhere along the line, you can't work enough to make salvation come your way. You just can't. 
And, and in that, we have to realize there is a certain dependence upon God. The, the, the passage begins with Isaiah saying, Rend, come down from. Rend the heavens and come down. It ends with saying, look upon us, for we are your people. In Isaiah's words, you can see a spirit of dependence. God, we need you. We can't make it on our own. Look at what he says in verse 6. All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. Isaiah, I think, is saying that we cannot govern ourselves and we cannot manage our own lives. He's saying that we need an intervention from God. And we need God to step in and take us out of look at me, look at me. I did it. I got educated. I got the job. I got in business. I did all these things. And all of a sudden, God steps in and says, hey, sing this. I need thee every hour. You know, uh, I, I, I have been in the place and with people, some are here today, that suffered great pain and realized that they need to be carried to the next moment, much less the next day, even year. Isaiah is saying we can't govern ourselves. We can't rule ourselves. We need him. In our society, we need an intervention from God as much right now as ever. We need an intervention, especially in COVID-19. We need an intervention in our politics. Some of us need an intervention in, in, in our finances. Uh, I constantly hear people talk about the next stimulus check. Um, I, I, I think we need intervention in, 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 our, in, in our personal lives that will take us back or to that place that we need to be. We need his righteousness. We need all that he has. Why do we need that? I'll tell you why we need that. God sent his son into the world to die on the cross for our sins because we needed it. We needed it. He, he, he sent his son to give us what we couldn't give ourselves. We needed this Jesus. We needed forgiveness. We needed salvation and hope and all of that. Uh, and, and, and most of all, I think we need a peace within us. And I think we need a certain sense of ex expectation. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but that does not take us to where we end. It takes us to a good place. It gives us what we need. The gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. I think that's that sense of expectation with which we can live. And I like to have an expectation from God because I think God has an expectation from me. And, and, and I look at that. I, I think about people, and, 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 and again, Bobby made reference to it a while ago. I think about people who are now lost to the church. It used to be that we would say, uh, four weeks, you hadn't seen them. In four weeks, you, they hadn't been. They gone. My Lord, it's been how many months since March? Many, many months. I wonder how many people the church has lost and how important it is to, to us, for us to stay in touch because we have people we don't hear from, we don't see, we, we don't get any notice from or any giving from at all. And I'm concerned. What are they expecting to happen in the church now? You can still come to this place and you can worship. And we'll give you a chance to give of yourself in the ways that you can. What do you expect God to do in your life? I just feel like something good is about to happen. But I don't know that everybody does that. I've already heard a story today about someone who is really down and out and losing that, that drive that they need to have. The message of Christmas. It was a promise made through the prophets revealed by the wise men, and then the shepherd boys came in from their flocks by night and said something good is about to happen, something that will change your life and change my life. And I encourage you to approach the season with an attitude of expectation and submission to God. Now, I really lived into, as I was preparing for today, 
I've been around Pittsburgh and I've been up in the mountains. There's a lot of pottery made in this state in a lot of places. And I can see that potter take that amount of clay, however much they're going to need to make the pitcher or, or the cup or, or, or the bowl or whatever, and splat, puts it down there. And then they begin to work with it. And then there's a turn sometime going on. And there's this turning, and they're beginning to mold it. They go over, and every so often, and what do they do? Get a little water. Put it on there. They want to keep it like it needs to be. They, they want it to, to continue to be soft and they want it to be have a certain texture that that potter can make something out of it. And I think about how rarely we sing and how even more rarely we go to God in prayer and say, not my will, but thy will be done, O God, and have, have thine own way with me. Mold me and make me what you would have me to be. Shape me the way that you would like for me to look, and then fire me once you get me at that right place. And I don't know where that place is for you, but that place for me is still becoming... Lord knows, don't fire me yet, Lord. I'm not ready to go in to kill. Get a little bit more water, honey. <laughs> and see, can't we get some of those places out that need to be purified and need to be made better? And as I sit back, I think about how people will run here and there, dying and I care. What, what all do we carry? Butter beans? Peas? Curly mustard greens, honey baked ham, deviled eggs. Y'all getting hungry? Uh, and got in the car. Of course, I slung the deviled eggs to start off with. And, you know, deviled eggs on top of each. Uh, you see what I'm, uh -huh. and, and, and so we went and, and everybody was there. And I think about how easy it is to want to... Tell your children, you don't have to go to the in-laws this year, do you? We want you to come to our house, and we want that tree to be perfect. I can hear Danny right now, Gay's got more trees than she ought to have. And, 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 and Danny told me one day, Gay was in the back, he said, you go over that tree, golly, there was 500 or more ornaments on that tree. Danny said, go over there and move one of those ornaments. When she walks back in the room, she'll walk right over that tree and put it back where it goes. <laughs> and, and, and I think about how perfect we want things to be. And then finally, <coughs> after I get through with Christmas Eve service, in Fuquaverina, I had four services last year. 1,860-some people came starting at 4 o'clock. My feet were killing me at, the, it was 12.20 in the morning, walking across the grass home. I got back there, and we didn't have a big meal. We didn't have much of anything, little cheese and crackers maybe. And I sat there with Diane, and I thought about that fire, those chestnuts sung by Nat King Cole, as no one else can do. God has a way of turning mountains back into molehills. And the things that we value sometimes too much, God has a way of saying, a pimento cheese sandwich would be pretty good. And I, I, I want you to let Jesus, during this season of the coming of the birth of the Christ child, I want you to look in your heart of hearts and I want you to think about what do you expect to happen anyway? You know? What, what kind of resolutions are you going to bring around that baby that didn't have a, a long gown to be baptized in of the fifth generation? I've done all this stuff, y'all. But it's in a stinking barn. They stink. Barns stink, y'all. Oh, they smell, they have a foul odor. I'm a professional pastor. <laughs> and, and, 
it's whatever blanket they could find. Hopefully it was soft. And they wrapped that little baby up. And some people came. And a few animals were around. And in the middle of that simple moment, the greatest event in history began. In the birth of Jesus the Christ. His gift is bigger than any gift. It is more gracious than any gift. And the expectations you might have around him will always be met by the one who will take you from the tragedies to the triumphs, will take you beyond the mountains, and take you back out to the plains. It is the gift of God. So what do you expect to happen at Christmas this year? Let's get our heads right and let us move forward in faith together as we look forward to the birth of Jesus. That's number one, the first candle. We have four more. Let us be together and enjoy it. God bless all of you who are watching from afar. I pray God will bless you, and you can start to decorate now. Go ahead and buy my gift. I wear a large. Let us pray. Holy God of grace, you've given us the gift. We don't need any more. You've given us what we needed and expected for so long, and yet we continue to reject that gift of the Christ child. Give him to us again. We need him again. We need him every hour of every day. Thanks be to God for what you have done in Jesus the Christ. Amen. They will usher you out uh, as um, the ushers do. Go in peace and God bless you this week. Good job. Thank you.